To begin with this morning, I just want to share a word of uh, thanks to our church. Uh, I, I do appreciate uh, the prayers. Uh, we've had a lot of people going through some very difficult times. Uh, not only the concerns of the virus, but also we've, we've had some of our uh, family members, um, church family members who have had loved ones who've passed away, and uh, the prayers there for them, and also prayers going out for people who've had surgeries or those recovering from um, medical conditions, and some of those are at home recovering now. And I do want to say also a thank you to our church for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, during this time. The ministry has gone on. We've still been ministering to people, reaching out to people. If, uh, I know it's been difficult face-to-face -face because of the quarantine, but we have been able to, to reach out to people through the phone, uh, through some visiting, and uh, just keeping in touch through calling posts and, of course, our, our messages that have been being sent out. But I, I just wanted you to know from a pastor that I appreciate uh, you and your faithfulness and your giving to the ministry uh, here at Pineview. And I am looking forward to us being together next Sunday. Uh, remember that is um, June the 14th at 1030 uh, here in our sanctuary uh, having a wonderful celebration together as a church. And I'm looking so forward to seeing you here uh, then. And we want to just say, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to call me at the office, or you can talk to Brenda or myself. We'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. But know that we are um, looking after you and your safety uh, far most in coming back here to worship in the house of the Lord. I want to begin by uh, saying just a little bit about what I'm going to be speaking about the next uh, two to three months God uh, has just been laying some messages on my heart uh, during this pandemic that we've been going through. If you want to say coronavirus is a giant, a giant problem, well, it has been for our nation, we know. Um, and it also, if we think about the news and what had happened to uh, George Floyd, his um, death, and how it's affected our nation, um, you might say that's a giant um, and when it comes to um, the things that we've been going through with that. The rioting, the, picket, the picketing, the, um, the anger, the bigotry, the hatred, um, all of that um, has been very concerning to us. But, but what I really believe is this, is a hold true to the things of God during this time and the days ahead. Um, stay true to the Lord, pray, seek Him, in all your ways. And, uh, and I believe no matter what, we'll get through it because God is with us through it all. So saying that, I want to just let you know that the series that we're going to be doing is a series entitled Facing Our Giants. And today I want to read a passage, and you, I've probably given it away just by the word giant, but as we know, David faced a big giant by the name of Goliath. And this is a two-part message. I'll do the second part next week. But this is the first part. It is Facing Our Goliath is the name of the message today. So we're going to begin by reading 1 Samuel chapter 17, and verse, starting in verse 20. So David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in a battle array, an army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words, so David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter, and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine, 
and takes away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So it shall be done for the man who kills him. Let us pray. Father God, I just want to thank you, Lord, for your truth, for your message today. And Lord, I pray, as I always pray, that we just not be hearers of your word only, but may we be doers of your word. We know we all face giants in this world. It may not be a Goliath, but there may be a Goliath-type problem that we're all going to face at some point in our life. And so, Lord, I just pray that you'll just use this message now, and I just pray you'll just speak your truth through me. Move me out of the way so that your word can be clearly heard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we look here at the message today, I just want to just uh, let you know as we look that um, we read about a shepherd boy named David. David was asked by his father Jesse to take food to his brothers who were fighting on the front lines. And so David clocked out of his duties as a shepherd boy there in the wilderness and he headed out to the valley of Elah. And as he, as he head there, his, uh, his father Jesse had told him, would you take some food to your brothers who were fighting on the front line? So he did. And you know, a lot of times when God asks us to go, it's our obedience. But sometimes as we go, we don't know how God's going to use us. And he was going to use David in a great and mighty way. I believe God already knew that David was going to be a king. Um, I believe he was going to be anointed as that king. And uh, so this was preparing David for that day. But David in this passage here, um, he asked a couple of questions uh, to these men. As he comes to his brothers and these other men on the front lines, he asks this. He says, what will be done for the man who defeats this giant named Goliath? And then he goes one step further. It says, who is this giant that he should defy the armies of the living God? But what we have to understand here is that Goliath wasn't just defying the armies. He was defying God himself. And God will not stand for that. There's things in this world that um, defy or go against God's standards. And, and as we've seen uh, through the news of George Floyd and all the stuff that's going on, we're seeing people rising up. They're doing some good things. There's been some justice in all this. But we see people looting and people burning down buildings. And, and I don't believe God honors that. Now, um, I understand the anger. Hear me out here. I understand the anger. And I believe anger is justified. But there's also another saying or when I think about this, that two wrongs don't make a right. That there are other ways that we can protest. There's other ways that we can rise up. But the question is this, boils down to this. When things like this happen... And they've happened time and time and time again. Are we learning from past mistakes? It seems like we're not. It seems like we just keep repeating history again and again and again. And you might say all through the Bible, there was this kind of rep repetition going on for Israel. They would repent for a while, they'd turn back to God, and then they'd get away from God. They would again repent, turn back to God, and they'd get away from God. Or, or a king would come in that um, is defying God. It was maybe unruly. Israel would get away from God. They would repent, turn back to God. And there's this pattern, this vicious pattern. And I see this vicious pattern in America today of hatred. And uh, as, as Aubrey so well said last week, is that love overcomes everything. And the, to know love is to know God. Because God is love. But what happens is we turn to man-made things. We turn to man-made philosophies and thoughts. And we turn to this person and that person. When God says, turn to me. Turn to me. So here is a shepherd boy named David. And, and he knew God. He knew God so well. And he knew what God was going to do through him. I believe from the very beginning... He had already had word about this giant named Goliath, but he learned a little bit more when he talked to his brothers. And he saw the fear, the fear in his brothers and these other, these other warriors. 
It said that they fled from this giant. They ran from him. They were afraid. You know, there's a lot of fears that are going on in this world right now. People are afraid. Um, there's different races that are afraid. Afraid to say the wrong thing or afraid to do the wrong thing. And there's fear. But we know this, that God can conquer all fear. Fear does not come from God. Fear comes from the evil one himself. And that's Satan. And as we know, fear is a liar. I think you've heard that song before on the radio. I've heard it many times on the fish and also on the radio station here, you know, that says, you know, that fear is a liar. And there's a lot of people buying in to the lies of Satan. But see, David, he was focused. He was focused on what God had called him to do. So let's look further and see what's uh, this story as we as we go on. So let's pick up the conversation here with uh, Saul and uh, David. And that's in verse 32. It says, Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. You see, David knew what God could do. Let me say that again. David knew what God could do. Do we believe that? You know, there's so many times in our life we face difficulties. And I've been through so many and I, and I appreciate the prayers for my wife and for my mother. Um, they've been going through some health challenges. As you know, I've been praying for my wife going through her chemo and now my mom is facing a lot of issues with vertigo and trying to recover in a rehab center in Alabama. And you know, I, I wasn't even able to get in. I drove five and a half hours to go see her last week, and I wasn't even able to see her. It started to sink in a little bit. started to understand that the difficulty uh, of this whole coronavirus thing is that I, I, I looked at her through a window and just waved at her told her I loved her. That's hard. When I would just love to go in there and just put my arms around my mom and just hug her and just say it's going to be okay. There's so many people across this nation that have been, been seeing that and dealing with that. And that's hard. Um, so let me just tell you, from pastor's heart, I understand. If that's you, I understand what you're going through. I, I, I got a little bit of that myself. I, I saw that. I dealt with that. And for 10 seconds, I just was waving at her, just telling her mom everything's going to be okay. But it's different when you're not able to go and, and be with your person that you love and, and, and talk to them face to face and, and shake their hand or hug them or whatever. But so we, we see the, the issue here is that David had to remind Saul. Saul had heard that David had, had spoken with the soldiers and... Um, and he understood that David wanted to see him, and he wanted to see David. So, here this conversation, and, and you know, as we know, David was, um, was a marksman when it came to a slingshot, and we're going to see that in the rest of the story. But he used that same slingshot against the, against the, the bears and the lions. It would come after his, his sheep. He was a protector. And uh, so he was reminding um, Saul of this very thing. He says, hey... The God who delivered me from the lion, the God who delivered me from the bear, will deliver me from this giant named Goliath. God's going to deliver us. People, you know, I want you to know that, that this, is, this is not the end. We're not, don't, don't think we're in the tribulation time, but I believe we're getting close to Jesus coming back. 
I believe these things are happening because God is trying to get our attention. He's allowing these things to happen to get our attention. They're giants. Just like Goliath. They're giants that are happening in our world right now. But God is still in control. Believe that. I've been having to be reminded of that um, just through some things I've been facing and going through uh, this, this week. So Saul told David, he said this, he says, David, you can't defeat this giant. You just can't do it. Do people tell you this a lot of times? You know, you, you have something in your mind where you feel like, I can do this, but you have other people that say you can't. You know, the, the thing, we're going to get to this truth here in a moment, but I, I want to share a quote from Max Licato's book. This is what he says in Facing Your Giants. In the book, Max writes, Your giant prances around your home. He prances around your office. He prances even around your classroom. He brings you bills you can't pay, alcohol you can't resist, grades you cannot make, a past you cannot shake, and a future you cannot face. As Goliath stalked the army of God, your giant stalks you. But know this, greater, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? But there is something else we want to know, is that when we buy into the lies of the liar, we forget there is a God and a God who is a game changer. Let me say that again. When we buy into the lies of the liar, we forget that there is a God who is a game changer. So in the remainder of my message, I want to hit three important truths from this passage. But I want to share the key passage right here. I haven't read this yet. And this is where I'm going to draw these three points from. But here it is. Here's what David said in verse 37, and this is the key. He says, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, He will, that will is an important word, He will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. So let's look at these three points now. I want to I share these three points with you because they're important. Here's, here's the first one. Here's the first truth. When the world says you can't, God says you can. You can. Because what he says here is that David said this, God will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And there's two key words that are in that phrase, will and deliver. Will means it is certain. Will means it's going to happen. It will happen. David did not say God might deliver me. He said God will deliver me. And there's a big difference there. But here's another word that's key in here. He says will and deliver. Deliver here means to surrender. It means to hand over. David knew that God would protect him from this giant named Goliath. He knew just as God delivered him from the lion and the bear, that God was going to deliver him from this giant named Goliath. When I think about these two words, will and deliver, I also think about Philippians 4.13. 4, it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And the key, in the, the key word in there is that I can do all. All is the key word. All things. Not some things, not a few things, but all things through God who gives us strength. So God is going to deliver us from our giants. But here's the, here's the, here's the key here. We've got to let Him. We've got to let Him. We've got to let God do this. And that's a lot of times as we try to do it in our own strength. We try to do it in our own way. And God says, just let me, let me handle it. Give it to me. So cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. Tell Him. Tell Him how you're feeling. And let me just say this, that it's okay to ask why. Job did. There's others in the Bible that asked. I'm sure David asked questions of why. But 
God doesn't want us to doubt Him. But it's okay to ask God, why, why am I having to go through this? Why am I having to face this difficulty? Why am I having to face this suffering? Why, why is the world going through this pandemic called coronavirus? Why is people being mean and people uh, killing other people and, 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 and rioting and, and the bigotry and the hatred? Why? God understands our hurts. One of the most powerful verses in the Bible is the shortest verse in the Bible. Is Jesus wept. Two words. Jesus wept. Jesus understands our troubles, our affirmities, our difficulties. He understands them more than we'll ever will understand them. And I believe everything that this world is going through was placed on Jesus when he faced and went to the cross of Calvary. He understands. So turn to him, cry out to him. But here's the second truth. When the world says wait, God says go. That's what Saul told David. Go. Go. Go does not mean wait. Go is an action word. It says act now. When I think about the word go, I, when I was uh, back when I was a teenager, I, uh, I ran track. And I think I've shared with you about some of my track exploits, and I was a sprinter. I wasn't a long-distance runner. I just didn't have the stamina to run a long-distance run, not even a mile. I used to run some long-distance just to try to stay in shape, but, uh, but a sprinter's philosophy is a whole lot different than a, a long-distance runner because a long-distance runner has to pace themselves. They have to not try to run so fast. They can't sprint. They have to pace themselves in order to finish the race. But a sprinter, it's different. When that gun sounds, boom, you better go. You're down and it says, ready, set, go. And you better not hesitate because the race is won and lost in those starting blocks. I know because I, I ran against some pretty fast guys. Uh, some guys are a whole lot faster than me. And I wasn't slow. I, I did pretty good in track. I was um, not slow. My dad was a very fast runner back when he was running and maybe I got a few of my skills from my father it was passed on to me but I knew this that when that gun sounded I'd better go but here's another thing is that when you're running the race you're not to look back sometimes you'll see and I have a picture of my father when he uh, ran the hundred yard dash there was a runner in that picture I looked at the other day it was above my desk and one of these runners was looking back. Well, he wasn't going to win. <laughs> he was so worried about what everybody else was doing, he wasn't even looking straight ahead. You see, a sprinter does not want to do that. A sprinter wants to look for the goal. He wants to look for the finish line. He wants to go for that finish line and not look back, not look to the side, but look straight ahead. But that principle is to us as well. We look straight ahead. Who are we looking to? Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We look to Jesus, and He's cheering us on. He says, come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Jesus is our biggest cheerleader. He says, come on, I'm with you. And, and Jesus is running the race with us. <laughs> you think when Daniel was thrown into the fire, who was in there with him? Jesus was. They said, there's four people in that furnace. Jesus is in there with them. Remember this, that Jesus is with us through it all. He is helping you run the race. And when we can't run anymore, you know what I believe? I believe Jesus just carries us. And sometimes we just say, Jesus, I can't run anymore. I'm tired. Carry me. And Jesus says, just... just let me have your troubles, your trials, your, all that you're going through. And we're going to talk some more about these kind of things later on in our, our messages related to facing other giants. But I, I want to go now to, um, to our third point. But before I do, let me, just, let me share a passage with you before I, I jump into the third point. It comes from Philippians 3 verses 13 through 14 because I believe this kind of sums up what I've been talking about here. It says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if Paul focused on his past, he would have been a miserable man. <laughs> I mean, he persecuted the Christians. He stood there and held the cloak as Stephen was stoned to death. Paul was there. It was at the hands of Paul that Stephen was killed. He was martyred. And he stood and, and, and saw others killed for the cause of Christ. But then that Paul had that Damascus Road experience where he was changed. But see, if Paul focused on his past, focused on all the stuff that he used to do, he would have been a miserable man. And so are we. And that's why I say that we, we focus. Don't focus on the things that drag us down. Don't focus on the, the past. And here, here's a key I want to share with you right here. Listen to this. We can learn from our past, but don't live in our past. Let me say that again. We can learn from our past, but don't live in our past. And don't you think that's what's happening in this world right now? We keep living in the past, in the past. Well, this is what happened. This is what happened to me. There comes a point sometimes where we just got to turn it over to God and say, God, I just give it to you. Forgive that person who hurt me or just come to, come to some agreement with that person. Seek some reconciliation. But here's the third truth. When the world says you are alone in your battle, God says, I am with you in your battle. Because Saul told David this. He says, the Lord be with you. Saul told David something that David already knew. David knew his God was with him. He knew that. And I believe we know that too, but sometimes we have to be reminded of that, don't we? Even through when all things are going bad, we think, well, God's just abandoned me. No. He's still there. He's still there. He just says, turn back to me. Turn back to me. There's a great hymn that says this. It says, Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because He lives. He lives in the life of every believer. Because He lives, we know that we don't have to be afraid. Because He lives, we know He holds the future. And because He lives, that we realize this. We are not alone. In the 23rd Psalm, which seems to be a very popular psalm that's shared at funeral services, in there it says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And here's the key. For you are with me. He's with you. There's another passage that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He won't. So as I sum it up today, it says, when Jesus died on the cross, it says all of our sins were placed on Jesus. All the troubles, all the trials, all the giants that we'll ever face, Jesus understands. He knows. In Isaiah 53, verse 3, in the first part, it says, He is despised and rejected by, man, by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. If anybody understands, Jesus does. You know, I kind of, in a way, I'm preaching to myself today. And you're going to probably find out I'm going to be preaching to myself a lot of times during this series. I was reminded so many times of the things that I was facing this week. God was reminding me, hey John, I'm here. Hey John, I haven't left you. Hey John... I understand what you're facing. I understand what you're going through. And let me just say this. He knows what you're going through and He understands. And He loves you. He loves you so much. So let me ask you this question. What Goliath are you facing today? When all the battles we face, and we will face them, remember these three things. Let me just sum it up. When the world says you can't, God says you can. When the world says wait, God says go. And when the world says you are alone in your battle, God says I 
am with you in your battle. But the thing is, we've got to let God fight for us. And we're going to talk about that because that's one of the points in my message next week. We have to let Him fight for us. So many times we're trying to fight it. And God says, just let go of it. Let me have it. Give it to me. Surrender it to Him. That hymn we sing, all to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. It comes a time of surrender. And David knew that. All he had to do is say, God, I know you're there. And God, I know that you're going to help me fight this giant. But we're going to find out what God does through David next week in part two. I think you know the story. But we'll have some other points to share from that story. But I just want you to bow your heads with me right now and I just want you to pray to be able to overcome your battles that you face. You've got to know God. You've got to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Let me ask you, has there been a time in your life where you said yes to Jesus, when you said, Jesus, come into my heart, save me. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I give my life to you. Have you done that? You can do that right now where you are in your living room right now or wherever you are listening to this message. You can say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to forgive me of my sin and I want you to come in and be my Savior and be my Lord. Ask Him right now. Give your heart and your life to Him. Do that. Just tell Him. And I believe this, that when you do, God says, okay, you know. You belong to Him now. You're a believer. You're a Christian. It says that, that faith comes you know, by hearing, but hearing and doing the will, the will of God. And, and it's more of just saying yes to God. And He will come into your heart. He'll come into your life. See, the thing is, it's not so much the words that we say, it's, it's the attitude of our heart to God. So ask Him to save you. And He will right now. And I know the heavens rejoice when you do. And if you have, again, like I've said through this series, is that we have a, a little book that says Beginning Steps of the Believer that I'd like to, to give to you. Um, and there's no, there's no charge on that. I'd just like you to have this book and it'll help you to understand a little more about what it means to be a Christian. A lot of times we go, now what? Well, it talks about the, what you do after. And uh, I encourage you to get in a church. Come here. If you're not a member here at this church, and if you're a a guest listening in, or if you live around this community and you're hearing this message, we would love for you to come be a part of our fellowship here at Pineview. You'll find loving people here to love the Lord and love you. So let's pray together right now. Our Father, I, I just thank you. I thank you for the lessons that we learned through a shepherd boy named David, that he was willing to go in your name. He was not afraid, even though I'm sure that he, and inside he probably was, and we're going to see next week that I'm sure he was probably shaking in his boots, but he knew that God was with him. And the thing I just pray today, that the folks that have heard this message today will realize this, that God is with them through it all. He's with you. He hasn't left you. He hasn't abandoned you. But he wants you to cry out to him. He's there. But cry out to Jesus. And he'll be there always when you need Him. And we just thank you again. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And let me just say this to you as we close out today that I am looking so forward to seeing you on June the 14th here at 10.30 a.m. here in the house of the Lord together, worshiping the Lord together, singing praises to His name. It's going to be a celebration service and I encourage you to come. But let me just say if you've feel a little bit hesitant, you know, the first couple of weeks. I understand. I understand. We want you to come when you're ready to come back to church. But to let you know that we're going to come back safely and efficiently, and it's going to be so good to see you. You have a blessed day today. And remember, God loves you, and He's with you through it all. God bless.